Hi and welcome to another Dex from the Graphic Design School. My name is Leanne and today we're going to be doing something fun and Christmassy. We'll be creating this animated GIF first in Illustrator, creating the pattern for the snowflake and the heart, and then creating the type for our message, and then taking those screens into Photoshop and creating the animated GIF. I'll also be showing you how to change the colour really quickly if you want to change the colour of your stitch in Illustrator before you take it through to Photoshop. So we'll start in Illustrator. So open up Illustrator. This is what our first screen will look like when we finish it. And there is our second screen with our pattern and our heart. We'll be using patterns like this as a guide to create the heart and the snowflake. And then I've just downloaded this from the internet, which is really a guide for people doing knitting or cross stitch to create letters in fabric. So it gives you an idea of how many stitches we need to go down and across to create the various letters. So we're gonna start with a blank document. I'll have two pages here on my second artboard up of my patterns and then on my master a blank document. First thing we're going to do is go view and we want to show the grid. So show grid and we're going to work to the grid to create our pattern first of all. We're going to go to the top here, go to the top corner. So we kind of like know we're starting over here where our pattern begins. We'll create a page of pattern and the reason why I won't use swatches and patterns here to create the background for the main stitches for the words is because they will change but we will create a pattern for the patterns that repeat like the snowflake and perhaps the heart. So the first thing we can do is we can hide our artboard actually so go view hide artboard and get your ellipse tool and just draw your ellipse to fit into um, one of the boxes in the grid. And then get your rotate tool and just rotate it a little bit and zoom in a little bit so we can have a look at that and then we're going to transform it so you can either hold down command option shift and press D to get transform each or go object transform transform each keep the scale and the move the same don't change the angle of anything just click on reflect X and go copy and we get a copy and then just drag it across. You can go into preview mode to make sure that it's nicely aligned. That looks good. And then select both. We're gonna unite them. So go to Pathfinder, Unite. And then we're gonna go View and make sure that you've got Snap to Grid so that we can scale this heart to snap into the shape of the grid, the format of the grid. There we go. And then we're gonna just du be duplicating this. So holding down Option Alt, um, and just click on it and drag it across to get into the next uh, little box in our grid. And then we're just going to duplicate that. Command D, Command D, Command D. And um, I'm just going to zoom out. You can just keep going like this. And we're going to fill our board with these hearts. Make sure you can just check and view. Um, show your artboard again. Yeah, we've got it. Now we're going to switch off um, Snap to Grid so that we can drag it down to create the next line. So make sure you switch off Snap to Grid and then we're just going to select all of these. Zoom right in. And then hold on Option Alt. Click on it so you get the double arrow. And then we're going to just create the next line. So just allow it to hug just below um, the top one. There we go. And then we can just duplicate that until we fill the whole page. Once we have the whole page filled, we're going to create a box behind that, which will be a dark um, background, and that will create the stitch effect. So just zoom out a little bit, go down. We can remove our grid now, so view hide grid and get your rectangle tool you can just drag and do it and we're going to send it behind our tie i mean behind our, our image of the stitches so just go to arrange center back it's the same color so we'll double click on that we're going to make it a darker um darker red so we're just going to make that a 155 and there we go I'm going to lock that for now, so just go Command 2 to lock it. 
I just want to check the color of the stitch because we did just draw it. It looks quite bright to me, so I'm going to double click on that. Um, it's 255. Five. I might just dull it down a little bit and make it 235. So just experiment with the color to see um, what works for you. But there's the beginnings of our stitch, and then we'll be creating the white stitches um, with that red background. We're going to move on to just creating the pattern now before we create the letters. So as I pointed out, we have our little bit of a pattern happening over here. So I'm going to borrow some of this to create our pattern um, that we can move around and save as a swatch. I'm just going to um, keep that background locked and just select some of my red. I'm going to copy and paste it and just drag it across over there. There you go. I'll create them separately, so I'll just delete some in the middle. There we go. And then we can add some of our dark background there too. Make sure it's the same color. We're making it 155. Five. Okay. And send it back. And get some background there. There we go. So to create the snowflake, you can, if you've followed patterns before, this will make perfect sense to you. But if you've never followed a pattern before, basically it's just working like a grid. So we'll just um, there'll be one line of white stitches going across here, and then we'll just count one down and just start our pattern. And so we'll go. The first thing we'll do is we'll just lock that dark red. So Select it, go Command 2 to lock it, and we're going to select all our stitches that we want to work with, and then get your Light Bucket Tool, Light Paint Bucket Tool, and then click on the color. We're going to make it white, go OK, and then we're just going to start with our um, line going straight across. And I'll zoom in just a little bit so you can see. So we just start, there we go, and go straight across. To create one straight line. If you accidentally click on something else, just select the color you want, or if you accidentally click into the gaps, you can change that too. Um, I'm just going to do this little dot in the middle there, and it'll give me a good. So I'll go one down and just click, and then I know I'm just going to go one across and one down, and then start. So we'll go one two, three, four, and then I'll go one up from here, one, two, three, four, another one up on there, one, two, three, four. So you need a little bit of patience to be doing these patterns, and I'll start over here, following my pattern, one, two, three, four, going up one, one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four. And then we have one part of our pattern created. And so you go just following your pattern one, two, three, four, and next line one, two, three, four, and next one, one, two, three, four. So I'll continue and I'll just speed up the video so you don't have to watch me click and I'll create the snowflake and then we can, I'll show you how to sh uh, save it as a pattern. There we go. There we have our pattern done. So we're going to work on saving it as a pattern and placing it in our swatches. So I'm just going to make sure that my background is not locked anymore. So just hold down Command Option 2 and it will um, make sure that it's not um, locked anymore. There we go. Awesome. Now what we're going to do is, actually we can keep it locked just for a moment longer. I'm going to select all our stitches, I'm going to object, expand them, go object full stroke, okay, and then what you want to do is just ungroup them, ungroup, ungroup, until your ungroup no longer shows, 
There we go. And then we're going to draw a rectangle around that to create our pattern. So get your rectangle tool. So you want to create a rectangle from where you want the pattern to begin and end and how it's, and that will be the beginning and, the, and where it will repeat from. So make sure that you've got your smart guide selected. So we can see where um, my cursor, my, um, my little point there inter interacts, intersects with the top half. So I'm just going to draw my square there. We can go in and check it in a moment and make sure that it's um, that it is lined up correctly. So I want to have a red heart on either side and put it down until it lines up with the top of a heart at the bottom. There we go. And I'm just going to go into preview mode, go right in. So you can see it's not lining up right at the top there. There we go. Go out a little bit and zoom right in. So we want it to line up with the side of the heart and the top of the heart over there. And then zoom out again. Go Command Y. There we go. There's our pattern. I'll just change the color so you can see it. Uh, let's make it a yellow line. There we go. So that will be our pattern. You can just double check. Uh, you might want to have another red line at the top. So we might just push that up. In in again, go command Y and just make sure that it's lining up exactly. There we go. And then we can trim it so we can just uh, make sure that everything's deselected and not locked. So we unlock the background there. Select everything and then go to your Pathfinder tool and then we're just going to clip it and there is your pattern. Perfect. Uh, open up your swatches so that we can just have a look. You can see I have one saved there already, but we're going to create a pattern here. So select your, your little pattern there and then go Object, Pattern, Make. And what it will do is give you a preview of what the pattern will look like so you can um, fade it back to see uh, how the pattern is working around your original and go 100 and it looks pretty seamless to me so if it looks good to you you can go done at the top and then you'll notice that there we go there is my little pattern saved over there so that is our snowflake we're going to do our heart now and I might just do it a little bit differently to show you another way to do it especially if you want to move things around a little bit so our heart is quite a simple pattern we're going to do exactly I'll just lock that Red, command two, and um, we can delete some of these because we don't need so many. And then select all the points and then get your live bucket tool. Double click, we're going to make it white, go OK. And then looking at our pattern, we just start with um, one white and then we go one, two, three across. And then we go one, two, three, five across, three, four, five across, and then seven across. Okay, and then we're going to do another row of seven right on top of that one. Do three, one, two, three, with one above that in the middle, and then one, two, three, one at the top and in the middle. So we can also create a pattern which is just white and that way um, we can have it on a transparent background and just place it wherever we like so we'll do a pattern like that too so i'm just going to delete some of these What this does rely on is you aligning the stitches, but I like to do this sometimes so I've got control over where it goes. There we go. And then I'm just going to delete that background. I'll go into preview mode so you can actually see it. Select my hearts and then 
Well, we won't be able to see it, so I'm just going to add it back on so that you'll be able to see it. Um, give it a colour. Back. There we go. Okay. I'll just lock that. Grab my hearts. Go object. Pattern. Make. Oh, it doesn't show because it doesn't show the background. But it's there. Um, we've got a little quick preview. I'll just go done. And then I'm going to see it is saved over there. So what happens then if you uh, draw a rectangle, for example, and I apply my heart to it, you can see it gives me my a repeat of my heart pattern. I'll just redo it. A better one over here. There we go. So give me it gives me many, many um, copies of my heart. If I want to do, I don't want to scale that square because it will scale my pattern. I can just drag it across like that to get um, to one pattern of the heart. I'm doing it in a really awkward fashion, but you get the idea. And then I can place that um, on my pattern. So there we have a heart and we have our snowflake. I'll just go out. So we have it saved there. Let's go over here. Um, I'm going to draw a strip across the top. And well, there's our heart. So you can use that as a pattern. Um, but I'm going to use that pattern. And I'm just going to keep my direct select tool so I can just select the points at the bottom and just drag it down. There we go. That's pretty good. And save that. And then I'll just show you another quick trick um, to create a line. If you want to create a line of stitches really quickly, I'm just going to grab one of the white stitches. Let's see if we can grab one of these. Just gonna grab it onto the dark background. There we go. Um, if I wanted to create a brush with this, open up your brushes and then just take your heart, drag it into your brushes. I'm gonna create an art brush, go OK. Um, I'm gonna keep it fetched, uh, fixed, should I say, stretched to fit. We don't want to change the color and just go OK. And that way, if I draw a line, I'll apply my heart to it. Mm, I don't want it to stretch. So I'll just go there, scale proportionally, and go, okay, two strokes, there we go, here's my heart there. So you can use the, the brushes to, to create a line, there we go. Okay, so I'm going to lock that to command two, so I've saved that. You can use that along the bottom too if you like, um, and now I'm going to get into my type. So the one that we did looked like this. I'm just going to do a couple of the letters to show you. So maybe do something like peace, love, and joy. So the way I do it is just to calculate um, sort of roughly where the stitches will sit. This doesn't have to be 100% just due to the nature of knitting. So I'm going to go to my Christmas knit. That's where we were. So peace, love, and joy. So my stitches, um, according to my grid that I've worked out and with the letters um, in the pattern over here, I'll just paste that there. So we've got it as a reference. I'm going to make my stitches uh, four across and eight down. And that kind of fits with this grid roughly. Some of the letters might be one grid uh, block a little bit wider. What I'm going to do is grab my rectangle tool, look at my layers. I'm just going to lock that layer and then create a layer where I'm going to write a letter grid and then just work out my letters. So I'm going to zoom right in and just get an idea of my stitches, the stitch size. So as I said, my letters are going to be um, definitely eight high, but about four across. So I'm going to go four across, one, two, three, four, and go eight down. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's the 
rough idea of each, the rough size for each letter. Um, and then I'm going to have one line of stitches in between. So if I look at uh, peace, love as my first line, um, I'm going to have P and then just drag it across E. And then I can just come on D to duplicate A, C, E, peace, love will be in my next one. So I'll do a space and then L, O, V, E. And that gives me an idea of how much space my letters will take up. There we go. So I want to center that. So I'm going to grab it, group it, and then go to align. Make sure align to artboard and center it. Um, I'm going to start my stitching about three stitches down. So one, two, three. And then that gives me an idea of where my letters will sit. Now, of course, it's going to have to start where the heart shape starts. So start on the left and there we go. So to recap, that will be P E A C E space L O V E. So I'm going to just delete the one where there will be a space. So it's P E A C E and a space. So I'll just delete that one. And that will just be my guide. So I'll lock that. Then go back to your stitches. And this is where we will start working on the, the letters. So because I've done this a few times, I kind of know how the letters go. But if you need to have a quick look at what you need to do to construct the letters, there is your guide. So I'll just drag it in a little bit closer. So our first letter is piece. So I can see it goes straight up alongside. And mine is a little bit narrower than this. This is one, two, three, four, five across. So I'll just do two or three and then do my three going down. So we're going to use the live bucket tool again. So grab your live bucket tool. Make sure that um, you've got white selected. And we're going to start. Painting our letters. Let's just select our letters. Um, make sure that our background blue is locked. So come on to background blue, background red is locked. And then select all the parts and then go right in. Okay, we've got our select uh, paint bucket tool. Double click on that, make sure it's white. Go okay. And then we're ready to go. Seems to be giving us some issues, so let's just see what's happened. Oh, if you want to, it's selected that too. There we go. So make sure you've just got your little shape selected. Get your pen bucket tool. Zoom in a little bit and it's red, so we make sure it's white. There we go. And then we can start the paint. Thinking about it. There we go. Okay. So we've created our P, go two across, and we've got two down. And there's our P. And then our E, two down. So I'm just using the rough structure of where the letters would sit. One, two, three, four across, one, two, three, four across, and one, two, my A. Make sure there's a row of stitches um, free in between. And we'll bring two across there and down. And so we go to create the letters. So just keep going until you get all your type in. And then I'm going to show you how to add your heart in a moment. There we go. And our final E. So we'll just stop there for a moment so we can see what that looks like. There we go. Selected. There we go. And I'll just switch up my grid so I can have a look. So there's peace, 
And so we'll go. So make sure you set up all your type in your grid first of all, so you know where everything sits and you can plan it so that you don't run out of space and you can center everything really nicely. So let's just go to the heart quickly that we created over there. So our heart, we can draw a shape. And remember, we have it saved as a swatch, as a pattern. So I'm just going to uh, draw a shape and then click on my heart. So of course, you can create a whole line of hearts if you like. Like that. And create a, an additional pattern. Um, and you can manip manipulate your path to cut out these little bits over here. But for now, I just want to create one heart. So we're just going to drag that across. Oops. Make sure you've got the two endpoints selected. Drag them across. There you go. Drag those two across. Zoom right in. So you can see what I meant by the fact that you need to align things here. And you might need to manipulate this path a little bit just to cut out the little bit of stitches over there. So we'll just add in some points there. Use your pen tool. Just add in a point there, 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 and there. And just let's have a look at our path here. So you can just drag that in and cut that out. Cut it out. I think we missed those points over there. So just add in anchor point there. Let's see, I'm happy with that. There we go. And then just get rid of that little last bit. And then you can move your heart to align with the hearts in the image. There you go. So you can place your heart in your stitching. So I won't take you through the agony of going through every single letter, but you get the idea of how to create your pattern and the letters, and then you can um, use the, the patterns that you've created to add to other parts of your design. So even if you want to have a little bit of this design somewhere else, hold on the option and drag it down. You can get your direct selection tool. Um, maybe you just have a little bit of the pattern at the bottom, like that. Cool. So create your message, and then I'll show you how to take this through to Photoshop to create your animated GIF. Um, I'll just give you a quick tutorial on how to change the colors. So if you've created your, your red pattern and you would like to change this to a cream pattern, Imagine you have all your words created, but just make sure that everything is not locked. And then we're going to select everything on that screen and go Object, Edit, sorry, Edit, Edit Colors, Recolor Artwork. And then you should get us something like this where it shows the colors that have been used in this artwork. So that is the original color, and this is what I can change it to. So double click on that. And we're going to change this to a, like a creamy color that can go in the background. So I've got it as something like this 7F5E 3D and go OK. And then my color, double click on that, my lighter cream, I've got it as D8C3. A7. So, okay. so it, it gives you a preview of what it will change to. So you can you can change the colors here too, just to manipulate them um, and get the desired effect. And then when you're happy, you can just go, okay, don't forget to do a save as so that you save your original red artwork and then you can save your cream artwork. So I'll just go to my final one that we created over here and um, let's just delete this artboard here. We don't need that anymore. And there are our two screens that we've created. So what we'll do now is just save it. 
and we'll take these through to Photoshop as JPEGs. Let's go File, Export As, select JPEGs, I'll just call these new. And put them in my JPEGs and go. Oh, before we do that, we want to use the artboards. So go use artboards or we've got the two artboards and go export. We're just going to save them as high and go OK. And then we're going to go to Photoshop and open up. We're going to open one of those. The first one. There we go. Here's my timeline open already. And open up the next one. This one I'm just going to copy into the previous one. So select all, copy, close that, paste it into this one. So that will be screen one. And I'm just going to duplicate that so and call it screen two. Delete the back one one. And so we have screen one and screen two. What we need to do here is create a timeline with these two screens. So go to view, window, sorry, timeline. And there you have timeline. And we're going to just create a frame. So the first one we want is that and create frame animation. And there it jumps in there. We're going to change that to three seconds or you can keep it to one of the suggested ones over there. And so we have our first frame and then one, so that was the frame. And then we're gonna add a new frame and make the new frame that one and also keep it at three seconds. So you can, and we're gonna change it to uh, playing it forever and you can preview your animation over here, press play. So it will hold each frame for three seconds. Once you're happy with your animation, you can go File, Export, Save for Web Legacy. And over here you can change the size. So it's 3509 pixels wide. So I'm just going to change it to 1000. And it's got two frames. It's going to loop forever and save. And I can save it in my final animation. And go save. And then if I go to my folder, I can drag that GIF into um, into a browser just to check it. So we'll just open final. There's our animation. And that is the new one we just created over there. So I'll just open up a browser window new one and just take that and drag it in to have a look at it and there is our animation so something festive and fun something that moves colorful um, for this wonderful time of the year I hope you've enjoyed this deck so I hope you create something really fun please upload your beautiful knitted works we'd love to see what you get up to and that's all from us at decks for now goodbye